Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the Criminal Record Clearance and the Clean Slate Clearinghouse webinar. My name is Chidi Umez, Project Manager for the Criminal Records Project with the Council of State Government's Justice Center. The Council of State Government Justice Center provides practical, nonpartisan, research-driven strategies and tools to increase public safety and strengthen communities. Before getting started, I'd like to briefly talk through a couple of housekeeping items about how the webinar is going to work. Anytime during this webinar, you can ask a question by typing it into the Q&A panel on the bottom right-hand portion of your screen. This includes both technical and content-related questions. We will try to reply to technical questions in the chat window as we go. For the content-related questions, we will keep a running list and address them at the end of the webinar. We'll do our best to go through as many questions as possible. If you encounter technical or audio problems during this webinar, please call WebEx Technical Support at 1-866-229-3239. Please understand that there are some technical issues we may not be able to resolve. For this reason, we are recording the content portion of this webinar and we'll post it on our website at cleanslateclearinghouse.org. We should have the webinar posted online in the coming weeks. Today, I'm happy to be joined by Jacqueline Freeman from the U.S. Department of Labor. I'll stop here to give her a chance to say a few words. Ms. Freeman? Thank you, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining the webinar. Uh, The U.S. Department of Labor is invested in strengthening our economy by ensuring that all Americans have the opportunity to work. The department has been investing for many years in programs that provide people in leaving incarceration with the skills needed to be competitive in the labor market. However, as we all know, a criminal record carries a stigma that makes it difficult for people to find meaningful employment. We're excited to announce the launch of the Clean Slate Clearinghouse. This is a resource that allows people and the workforce agencies they depend on for support to find ways to minimize the impact of criminal records on employment decisions. The Clearinghouse will also help facilitate the critical connection to legal service providers who can assist in this process. Ensuring people with criminal records can work work makes good business sense. The Department of Labor is committed to developing a skilled workforce and addressing barriers that prevent people from getting back to work. We know that we can't do it alone, and we are so pleased to see so many businesses and chambers across the country become more vocal about the benefits of hiring people with criminal records, people who are now seen as an untapped labor pool of talent. We are also pleased to announce that we have partnered with the U.S. Department of Justice to support this initiative. And we know that by working together, we can create employment opportunities for millions of people in this country with criminal records. At this point, I'll turn this back over to to Chidi. And I just want to thank uh, the Council of State Governments and uh, the staff from the Rio team and the Department of Justice for working on this project. And I want to thank the audience today for joining us. Thank you so much, Ms. Freeman. And we're very, we're very thrilled to work with you on this new and exciting project. The purpose of this webinar is to discuss the impact of a criminal record, including collateral consequences that follow a conviction. I will provide an overview of criminal record clearance efforts across the U.S. to mitigate these consequences through criminal record clearance legislation and introduce the Clean Slate Clearing House a tool that will provide information and resources on criminal record clearance policies across the country. I want to begin by talking about the impact of a criminal record. With an estimated 7 million adults in the U.S. carrying some sort of criminal record in their personal history, this gives evidence to the magnitude of the issue. The impact of a criminal record has broad implications for individuals and families' economic security, as well as for our national economy. For instance, 
A person with a criminal record is 50% less likely to receive a job offer than an applicant without a record. Along these same lines, a criminal record can affect the lives of families, with research showing that approximately 180,000 women are subject to a lifetime ban on public assistance because of their criminal records. When people with criminal records remain underemployed, the U.S. economy loses approximately $82 billion in annual GDP. This is of particular interest to businesses who are seeking ways to fill open positions with qualified candidates. This impact is greater for communities of color. A study by the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics found that for the rate of women incarcerated in 2015 per, per 100,000 women, 103 were black and 63 were Latina, compared to 52 white women. The same study found that black men were six times more likely to be incarcerated than white men, with 2,613 black men per 100,000 being incarcerated in 2015, compared to 1,043 Latino men and 457 white men. As a person moves through the criminal justice system, there are decision points and opportunities to determine whether a criminal record will attach, starting from the point of arrest through probation or parole. Incarceration is just one point at which a person acquires a criminal record. Given what we know about the many consequences of having contact with the criminal justice system, even something as simple as a non-conviction arrest may inhibit certain opportunities and access for people of color. From research, we have discovered that there are a number of factors that lead to someone reoffending, And if those factors are addressed with the most appropriate correctional treatment, interventions, and programming, along with supported services, the likelihood of a person reoffending will decrease. Employment is an important factor in successful reentry as it can create positive relationships, income for families, improved mental health, and so on, especially when earnings are above minimum wage and the jobs are stable. But because of their criminal history, many individuals have difficulty finding stable and meaningful employment. With over 80% of employers conducting background checks on some or all job applicants, those with a criminal record are likely to experience frustration in their job search. Even individuals who have records that are over 20 or 30 years old, which are not related to the desired field of work, may be un- or underemployed because of their employer's hesitation to hire someone whose background check comes back with a criminal record. This is the case despite the research from a study based on the length of time in which a person's criminal record is predictive, which found that at some point, a person with a criminal record has a similar risk of committing a new offense as the general population. So even though a person's criminal history after some period of time may not predict their likelihood to commit another crime, certain consequences are triggered by a criminal conviction. These so-called collateral consequences are found in state and federal statutes and regulations and place restrictions on the ability of people with a criminal conviction to access employment, occupational licensing, housing, voting, education, and other opportunities. The National Inventory of Collateral Consequences of Conviction, a project supported by a grant from the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice, is a searchable database of the collateral consequences in all U.S. jurisdictions. This database catalogs over 40,000 federal and state collateral consequences of which over 31,000 are permanent restrictions. With the population of individuals with a criminal record and the staggering number of consequences that follow a conviction, 
states are employing different strategies to mitigate the impact of a criminal record on a person's life. Criminal record clearance is one of the mechanisms that states are using to help individuals move beyond their criminal records. A common strategy states are employing is to enact fair chance hiring or ban the box policies that provide guidance on consideration of a criminal record in hiring decisions. These policies are designed to postpone consideration of criminal record information on job applications, primarily for public employers, but states are moving towards expanding these policies to private employers as well. Criminal record clearance policies, however, have different effects on the consideration of a person's criminal record. The term criminal record clearance is a general term to describe the process of removing a person's record from public view. States use different terms to describe this process, the most common terms being sealing and expungement, as the ways in which an entry may be removed or cleared from a criminal history report. Although it varies by state, record clearance policies relieve a person from disclosing the existence of a criminal record when seeking employment opportunities. For most states, the process of expungement generally means that the records are destroyed. An applicant does not have to disclose that they have had a criminal record. For states that have sealing, this generally means that records are not publicly available. But depending on the state, Expunged records or sealed records may be disclosed for licensing decisions, may be used for criminal justice purposes, or may be inspected with a court order. Along with the types of records and offenses eligible for clearance, other elements of the clearance policy play a role in understanding a state's clearance process. The first dimension is the eligibility. What types of records are eligible for record clearance in the state? The second dimension is what is the effect of the record clearance policy? This usually refers to what happens to the record, whether or not it is shielded from public view completely. The third dimension is the timing or the waiting period before a person can begin the record clearance process. This can range from one year to 20 years after the sentence is complete. The fourth dimension is the process for record clearance in the state. The most common methods being automatic or petition-based or petition -based clearance. And the last dimension to consider is the cost or the fees outlined in the record clearance policy. Some states, are, some states are recognizing that high fees may hinder access to record clearance, and so they allow a waiver for indigent applicants. When considering the dimensions of a state's record clearance policy, I mentioned the first dimension being the type of record that qualifies, qualifies for record clearance in the state. One of the most one of the common types of records that states are choosing to focus their clearance legislation on is non-conviction information. These are cases where the arrests are dismissed or the charges are dropped. For these types of records, a number of states are choosing an automatic or administrative clearance process in order to create some level of efficiency. For states who offer clearance, for some form of probation or deferral program, the process usually becomes effective immediately after the individual has completed the probation or deferral program. Juvenile records, records obtained before the age of maturity in the state, which is usually 18, are kept confidential and can be cleared under the state's clearance process once the individual turns 18 or completes their sentence. Misdemeanor offenses in most states carry a penalty of imprisonment of one year or less. 
For states that offer clearance of misdemeanors, these policies usually apply to individuals with one or two misdemeanors who may be eligible for clearance a few years after completion of their sentence. Record clearance for felony offenses are usually the most restricted types of clearance policies, often prohibiting clearance for sexual offenses or serious violent crimes. This map shows that most states have enacted some form of record clearance policy for felony and misdemeanor convictions. At one extreme is Illinois' recently expanded ceiling law which extends relief to all but a few very serious offenses. At the other end of the spectrum is California's closure for only certain, for certain misdemeanors. Recognizing the growing trend of record clearance legislation across the country and the efforts to reduce barriers for people with criminal records, the Department of Labor and Department of Justice released a solicitation for an online clearinghouse of record clearance legislation across the country. The Clean Slate Clearinghouse was created to support juvenile and adult record clearance around the country by providing up-to-date information on record clearance as well as contact information for legal service providers in all U.S. states and territories. The Clearinghouse provides tools and resources for legal service providers currently engaged in clearance work or those who want to expand their criminal record clearance services. The Clearinghouse also provides information to compare record clearance policies across jurisdictions and to learn about best practices. The site was designed to capture three target audience groups. First, people with criminal records who were seeking to have their record cleared. The second group being legal service providers who offer record clearance services. And the third is, is, is for policymakers who want to compare record clearance policies across the country. Within these groups, however, we also anticipate that the site will be used by reentry and workforce service providers who can connect people to services, indigent defense attorneys or pro bono attorneys who are interested in starting or expanding their record clearance practice, and researchers or journalists who want to compare trends in record clearance legislation across the country. The Clearinghouse was created by the Council of State Governments Justice Center in collaboration with Community Legal Services of Philadelphia, National Juvenile Dis Defender Center, National Association of Counties, and National League of Cities. The project was further supported by an advisory board of 32 legal professionals, including researchers from universities, legal service providers, and record clearance policy advocates from all over the country along with key officials from the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The advisors brought expertise on the adult and juvenile criminal record clearance process, the effects of record clearance on commercial background checks, and access to public housing, licensing and fair hiring policies. I'll stop here in the PowerPoint presentation and go to the Clean Slate Clearinghouse website to talk about some of the functionalities that we're excited to share with you today. For better viewership, you can use the two arrows located at the top right corner of your screen to widen the page. And to return to the normal PowerPoint view later on in the presentation, you may use the escape button on your computer. When you come to the Clean Slate Clearinghouse website, you'll see three primary portals that a user can enter. 
The first is the Learn About Your State portal. This portal allows you to see brief summaries of adult and juvenile record clearance policies in each state, to view court forms and state guides, and allows attorneys to review statutory information for a particular record clearance statute. The second portal allows you to find legal service providers who specialize in record clearance in each state. And the third portal contains a map that allows you to compare the dimensions of record clearance policies across the country. But before I go into each portal, I want to walk through some information on the site homepage. One of the first piece of content you will see is an article in a series we call the Get to Know the Experts series, where we highlight some of our advisory committee members and other experts, experts in the field of record clearance. We also plan to have more original content in the form of testimonials from those who have gone through the record clearance process, from policymakers, law enforcement officials, and other diverse voices who have some connection to record clearance. On the homepage, we also post a curated list of articles, events, reports, and announcements around record clearance. You can also access these posts using the News tab on the top of the page. So now I will go back to the three portals and start with the Learn About Your State portal. Here we have a map where you can choose your state of interest or choose from the list of states on the right side of the screen. I'll choose Arizona. On this page, we have included an overview of record clearance policies in the state for both adult and juvenile records. This section was designed primarily for people with a criminal record who want to see if they would be eligible for clearance in their state. Here we've included the types of offenses that may be eligible for clearance in the state, the waiting period before they can begin the process, and the clearance process for the type of record they are seeking to clear. On this page, we've also included a tab on the left side for the Find a Lawyer portal which we encourage people to use to contact a lawyer to answer questions regarding their eligibility for record clearance in their state. Underneath the Find a Lawyer tab on this page is a tab for court forms and resources for each state that may help guide people with the record clearance process. For legal service providers and other attorneys, we have a legal policies and statutes tab that takes you to a breakdown of the statutory language for the state record clearance policy. Here you can review the statutory overview, get information on any ineligible offenses under the statute, the procedure for clearance, the fees associated with the procedure, the effect of clearance in the state, and the waiting period. We've also provided links to the state legislative website for further reference. The next portal on the homepage is the Find a Lawyer portal. Here again, we have a map where you can choose your state of interest or find the state from the list provided on the right. I'll choose 
Arizona again. Here we've listed the contact information, including service areas for legal service providers in each state who will provide record clearance services at a low or no cost to clients. We've also included Bar Association lawyer referral service information for those who may not qualify or do not have access to legal service providers in their area. The third portal on the homepage is the Compare States portal, which begins with a map of the U.S. The first step on this page is to select whether you're interested in comparing adult or juvenile records. I will select adult. The next step is to select the type of record from the drop-down menu which includes convictions, diversion of deferral programs, factual innocence, and non-conviction arrests. I will choose convictions. Here you can see all the states that have some record clearance policies for convictions shaded in blue. You can also narrow the search by selecting the record detail, the clearance process, or the waiting period to see how states compare. We're currently working to enhance the functionalities on this page to allow for additional state-by-state -state comparisons and to include record clearance trends and statistics across the country. And we're excited to make those improvements as we go along. The last page I want to walk through is the resource page, which you can access from the top right hand corner of the home page. Here we have compiled a list of national and state guides that I previously highlighted on the Learn About Your State page. We've also curated a list of articles and reports from federal agencies, academic reports such as law review articles, and other resources which include reports from national agencies. For a better search, we've categorized these resources based on topics listed on the left side of the screen. As we move forward with the Clean Slate Clearinghouse project, we will continue increasing the functionalities of the site, incorporating diverse voices, and curating resources and trainings around criminal record clearance policies. I'll stop here and take questions. The first question is, when did the Clean Slate Clearinghouse begin? What year did it start? The Clean Slate Clearinghouse officially launched September of this year, but the project began in October of 2016 with building of the website, curating uh, the statutes and curating articles and resources to include on the site. We were excited in September of this year to have the public launch of the site and we're excited about the input and the feedback that we've gotten so far, and we're excited to go um, to move forward with the clearinghouse as we go on through year two and year three. The second question is, how can people with criminal records best use this? The best way for people with criminal records to use the Clean Slate Clearinghouse to sign on onto their state page 
the, the, to learn about the policies in their state. We recommend that they check for the eligibility of their record of the clearance in their state and to really contact the lawyer through the Find a Lawyer page, contact a legal service provider to be able to answer more questions about their eligibility for record clearance in their state. Does uh, the, the next question is, does California only expunge misdemeanors? At this time, California has some clearance for misdemeanors, but there are limited, there's limited clearance in California for felonies. But um, to get more information, please visit the California uh, site, state site on the Clean Slate Clearinghouse to get more information on the record clearance policies available in California. Uh, the next question is, how is the clean slate clearance different from expungement? Uh, I, um, as I mentioned in, in the presentation, there, each state has a different terminology for record clearance in their state. We're using the broad term um, record of record clearance to, to, detect, to dictate or to determine um, the types of clearance that's possible, but each state uses a different terminology. So a state can call it expungement, another state can have sealing, another state can have destruction. So it just depends on the state um, and the terminology that's used in the state and the effect of clearance in that state. Um, can felony sex crimes be expunged? Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, most states have limited clearance for serious crimes and for serious and for sex crimes. And so you just have to check the policy in your state using the learn about your state. You can find out what policies are available, what record clearance policies are available in that state. The next question is, is there a site for federal offenses? At this time, the Clean Slate Clearinghouse only catalogs state record clearance policies. And so there, at this time, there is no, uh, we don't have the information available on the Clean Slate Clearinghouse for federal record clearance. Okay. See if we have any more questions. Another question says, is there any information on charge reductions? As some states allow, um, for example, getting a felony reclassified as a misdemeanor in the records. For, I know for California, there, uh, we do have information about getting felonies reclassified as misdemeanors, but we don't go heavily into that process on the site. We typically focus on the process for record clearance in general, and then um, we do have the links to the California statutes that will give more information on reclassification. Um, next question is, does the state provide the average cost to Does the state provide the average cost for expungement? I mean, sorry, does the site provide average cost for expungement in the state? For each state, 
If there are fees enumerated in statute, we've included that information on the state, on the Learn About Your State portal. But if, um, for the most part, if there is no language in statute regarding the fees associated with record clearance in the state, then we haven't included that information. And we appoint people to, um, to links to the statutory language or to really contact the a lawyer and legal service provider in the state to get more information about fees. The next question says, is it feasible for individuals with criminal histories to apply for expungement without retaining an attorney, particularly working, uh, for working class individuals who may not qualify for the waiver due to having a source of income such as retirement? We have included on the site in the Learn About Your State portal court forms and resources for those individuals, as we said, who may not qualify for legal um, service provider services. But we do highly recommend um, consultant, uh, co consulting with an attorney um, at any stage of the process, particularly in the beginning stages or through the process as much as possible. But we do understand that there are some who may not qualify for legal service provider services, and so we have included court forms and resources for those individuals. How do you know if your record has been destroyed or hidden? Again, uh, for each state, we've included the general term that's used in the state for record clearance. And um, under the legal policies and statutes and also under the summary, we do include information regarding what the clearance terminology and the effects of the, of the record clearance process in that state. But again, we encourage people to contact um, an attorney or a legal service provider to figure out um, the true effects of the, record, of the record clearance process in that state, whether it's destroyed, whether it's, it's hidden. In the presentation, I also mentioned that there may be, um, although records may be expunged or sealed, they may be available with a court order or, or available for licensing purposes or available for law enforcement purposes. So it just depends on the policies in the state. Are new legal specialists going to be added to each state as time goes on? Yes, yes, and we encourage, um, if you are a legal service provider providing uh, record clearance services in your state and you don't see yourself listed on the site, please contact us at cleanslateclearinghouse.org to let us know that you are a legal service provider providing record clearance services at a low or no cost to clients, and we will add, uh, we will add your information, um, service information, to the site as appropriate. And the next question is, if I see something on the site that's not correct, is there a way to report it? Yes. As I mentioned, please email cleanslate at csgjusticecenter.org. It's listed here on the screen. Email with the correction or the information that you believe is incorrect. Or um, yes, and we will respond. We will respond appropriately. The next question is, in some states, case law is, import, is important. Is there any case law on the site? While we do recognize that case law is important, we limited, to site, we limited the site to statutory language and statutory information um, because case law is so vast and um, vast reaching and it's, um, it's ever moving. We defer to the legal service professionals in the state to um, give information regarding case law, but we've relegated the, the site to 
statutory language as it currently exists. As new statutes are enacted um, and as language changes, we'll update the site as appropriate. The next question is how has this site broadened the impact of employment possibilities? Well, we haven't, um, at this time we, ha we haven't figured out how, um, we haven't done the data and the site is so new. We, we hope and our, um, our goal is that this site will help individuals figure out their eligibility for record clearance in their state give access to those who um, might not have thought of record clearance as a way to mitigate the barriers to employment and to expand those possibilities by having individuals seek legal service providers and the services of record clearance from legal service providers in order to clear their record and to have uh, widened and broadened uh, employment opportunities. The next, I guess, question and comment is, you mentioned policymakers. What can I tell my state representative about this? Well, we, as I mentioned, we have the Compare States portal, which is a map that allows you to compare policies across the country. And so for state representatives, the goal is for them, uh, for those who are interested in enacting record clearance legislation, for those who want to see the types of policies that are out there, um, for those policymakers, the goal is that they will go on the site um, to see any record clearance policies across the state, to see what types of waiting periods, to see the dimensions of record clearance policies. And for those who do want to enact legislation, just to see what the possibilities are. Uh, we're also providing technical assistance to states and policymakers, and so we can provide information on what states are doing, some best practices around record clearance legislation. And so, yes, uh, and so that's information that we, we want to provide to state, uh, state representatives and policymakers. Uh, the next question is, are there risks for individuals completing the expungement forms on their own, like having the motion to expunge denied permanently? Are there sample completed forms online? Um, yes, there are risks for individuals completing the expungement forms on their own, and so that is why in the presentation and throughout the site, we really encourage people to contact an attorney, contact a legal, a legal service provider, contact a legal professional who um, specializes or does record clearance um, and provides record clearance services in order to mitigate some of those risks. Are there sample completed forms online? Although we have the forms available, they're not completed. Um, so again, like I said, that's why we have many avenues for people to contact legal for, a legal professional, whether it's legal service providers, the um, Bar Association Lawyer Referral Line to be able to get help and assistance in completing these forms. Does a certificate of rehabilitation count as record clearance? Um, as I mentioned before, I, we used the definition, the definition that we've used for record clearance on the site is, um, is the process by which a record is removed from public view. And so I do know some states do issue certificates of re rehabilitation, which, which may assist in, um, for those who are seeking employment opportunities. But um, under our definition of record clearance, the certificate of re rehabilitation for the site does not 
um, does not meet that definition of record clearance, but it does in those states that do offer certificates of rehabilitation, it does um, expand the opportunities for employment in those states. Uh, are the legal service providers listed free or do they charge? Most of the, most or all of the legal service providers that we've listed have either a low cost or no cost services for their record clearance services. And so um, they, if there is a fee, it's a low fee and it's income, it's income based for the ones that we listed on the site. Okay, if there aren't any other questions at this time, um, I just want to point to the newsletter. Um, I just want to add that we do have newsletters and announcements, and you can sign up on our site at cleanslateclearinghouse.org to receive the newsletters and other announcements around record clearance and updates to the site. And if there aren't any more questions, not seeing any more questions, thank you again for joining the webinar today. I also want to say thank you to Jacqueline Freeman from DOL for joining me today. We encourage you again to sign up to receive newsletters and announcements at cleanslateclearinghouse.org. For any information um, and to reach out to the team directly, you can email cleanslate at csgjusticecenter.org. We also encourage you to share this incredible resource with your vast networks. Thank you and have a great day.